The work at Ground Zero can at times be overwhelming. Of course, it's the place where nearly 5,000 people lost their lives. And now crews are working hard to clear the immense amount of debris. But one of the biggest challenges is what to do with the nearly 2 billion pounds of rubble. It's been on a lot of big projects. This is different. I mean, I don't think the city of New York has ever seen anything like this. Or the world of engineering, for that matter. Companies like Weeks Marine are working overtime on one of the biggest excavation projects in history. Currently in the, pro in the, in the project, we have uh, about uh, 90 personnel, um, over 30 barges, uh, four loading cranes, and about three tugboats. Uh, being used to transport the debris and the steel. Workers at Ground Zero move piles of rubble into dump trucks. The trucks haul the debris and steel to Weeks Marine at two waterfront sites in Lower Manhattan. Cranes capable of moving more than 50 tons a load get the debris onto the barges. We're averaging between five and 6,000 tons a day uh, between the two sites. Marty Corcoran is the operation manager. He arrived on site soon after the attack. I guess this is what war looks like. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I've never seen anything quite like it in my life. Once the refuse is on the barges, it is sent to locations around New York Harbor. Captain Scott Murray runs a small tug, perfect for the tight fit of New York Harbor. This is a 62-foot, 1,000-horsepower tugboat. Uh, you know, it's real good for this type of work that we're doing with these smaller scows, harbor work. Murray has been in this line of work for 25 years, but this job hits home. One of the things I've always loved about working in New York Harbor is working around Lower Manhattan here in the East River and this view of Lower Manhattan and the skyline. So now, every time I look over there and see that without the World Trade Center in it, like being kicked in the stomach. Today, Murray is making runs across the East River. Pier 6 in Brooklyn is a staging point. Murray drops off one full barge here, picks up an empty one, and returns to Manhattan for more loads. From there, the full barges are toted off to Fresh Kills Landfill and recycling plants in New Jersey. And the amount of this stuff, and I know you've been looking at, see, look at that. That's four-inch thick steel that just twisted up like a pretzel. One of the drop-off points is the Hugo New Schnitzer East processing plant in Jersey City. General Manager Bob Kelman says they're taking in about 3,000 tons a day. There's two different types of material coming in. Some of it is kind of a mixed light iron material, a lot of building interiors, uh, ductwork, um, paneling type material, metal paneling. Um, and the balance is the original heavy beams that came off the World Trade Center site from, I believe, about September, right after the attack on the 11th to about the 19th of September. The operation is working around the clock to handle up to 110 trucks and four barges a day. Once offloaded, the steel is cut up into smaller pieces using massive shears, so-called guillotines and high-powered acetylene torches. We're basically trying to cut it into segments. It's going to be manageable. But because the material, it's so thick and so heavy, they'll cut cross-section on top, then we'll flip the whole piece over and cut the bottom. The method is just to get it super hot, and you're blowing air using fuel and oxygen to get it hot and molten. Then you blow air to actually blow the molten steel down below. And you start cutting it, it's like cutting like a knife. You have to get it to that critical melt point, and then you can keep blowing. It's the only way you can cut this. Only way. The beams are cut into two to three foot blocks for easier transport and ultimately melting down. The material is going uh, anywhere from China and the balance of Southeast Asia, Malaysia, uh, Taiwan, Singapore. It's going to the best available market at any given time. The scrapyard has become a scientific laboratory of sorts. Engineers from around the country have come here to examine the steel and learn more about why the Twin Towers collapsed. Dr. Hassan Astane brought samples back to the University of California, Berkeley. What happened here was actually the, the engine 
go, went in and took a chunk from the side of the column. In this picture, you see the piece, a section of the airplane actually struck what we're looking at here. And it's exampled by the, the way that the material, the steel, is almost cut like a knife. The steel is flared in. It's kind of sliced like butter. And according to the professor, and it seems to bear, um, you know, hold up, that what we're looking at is something that was hit at a very high velocity by something very hard. And after engine went through it and cut this piece, the column was standing, or the rest of it. Astane has developed his own classifications for the massive amounts of steel coming out of ground zero. One is critical. These critical members are those that were hit with the plane, and I found to have four of them. Like this one. It was part of one of the larger uh, rectangular box columns, and, and what I understand is that these were part of the internal supports of the building up near the elevator shaft. So uh, this is deep inside the building. What we have here is another example pointed out by the professor of what he believes indicates a massive impact uh, by either a part of the fuselage or perhaps you know, part of the body of the air airplane itself or an engine. The second category is important members beams that heated up and buckled. This is one of the beams that uh, obviously took a lot of heat damage and actually started to melt because it burned right through. There's a burn hole and it actually kind of collapsed under itself and uh, clearly due to the heat. And it's significantly corroded and melted. And the back side of it is gone. Intense heat that they've been talking about for, you know, 1,500 1,500 degrees to 2,000 degrees. The third category, valuable members, consists simply of beams twisted and mangled by the collapse. And finally, pieces that don't need to be studied and can be recycled immediately. Yet even they tell story. What's interesting, too, though, is that these bolts didn't fail. This was ripped out, but structurally, she held together. From all indications, we're seeing a lot of bolts that are in place. And uh, that's testament to the people who built it. For Kelman and his crew, the long hours and the nature of the work have taken their toll. That's our skyline now. <clears throat> For 30 years, we knew it from this facility with the Twin Towers as part of the battery and, you know, Statue of Liberty. And instead of the buildings being there, they're here. It's nuts.